Hello, everyone. I am Mrs. Ryan, and once again, it is great to be with you. All this month, we've been talking commitment. And commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. You need commitment if you want to succeed, whether you're training for a race, whether you're studying for a test, or whether you're learning how to play a musical instrument. First, you need a good plan, and then you need to put that plan into practice. We have also been learning all month how we can practice our training plan to grow stronger in our relationship with God. If we stay committed, we'll get better and better at what Jesus said was important. And that is loving God and loving other people. Now, I thought it would be fun for us to play a game as we check out today's Bible story. And our game is called Pick That Emoji. Because we'll answer a series of questions using emojis. Now, I won't be able to hear your answers or see you act out your answers, but I know we're still going to have a lot of fun. So let's look at the first slide. All right. Are you feeling A, happy, B, joyful, C, silly, or D, like a puppy dog? Happy, joyful, silly, or like a puppy dog. And you can answer by acting out whichever emoji you want. All right, go ahead. I wish I could see you. Okay, the correct answer for that one is any of them. You can feel any of those emotions. All right. Let's jump into today's story. Now, this was a conversation Jesus had with his friends, the disciples, after they had traveled from Galilee to a city called Caesarea Philippi. And Jesus asked his friends this question. It's from Matthew 16, and I'm going to read verse 13. It says, there he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? Now Jesus' friends knew that when he said the Son of Man, that he was really talking about himself. So really what Jesus was asking was, Who, say, who do people say I am? Who do people say I am? So what do you think the disciples said? Let's look at our next slide. Okay, did the disciples say, A, a prophet, B, John the Baptist, C, Elijah, or D, Jeremiah? So, prophet, John the Baptist, Elijah, or Jeremiah? All right, so if you want to, you can just say your answer or you can try and act out your answer. So which emoji do you think is correct? All right, well, let's look in the Bible and see how the disciples answered Jesus. Now remember, Jesus asked them, who do people say I am? And this is verse 14, and verse 14 says, they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. So the answer is all of them. So whichever one you choose, you're correct. Now, I know this might be a little bit hard to understand or a little confusing because why would people say that Jesus was somebody other than himself? Well, you have to realize that they had seen Jesus 
doing many amazing miracles. And they had heard Jesus talk confidently about God. And the only other people who had really done that before Jesus were people like John the Baptist, Elijah, and some of the prophets. So what the people were really saying is that Jesus was like those other people. The people knew that Jesus was very special. Well, then Jesus asked his friends another question, and this is verse 15. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Well, Peter spoke up, and what do you think he said? Well, let's look at our slide. All right, so did Peter say that Jesus was A, a prophet, B, a teacher, C, a regular guy, or D, the Son of God? Prophet, teacher, a regular guy, or the Son of God? Which one did Peter say? All right, you can just shout it out at home or act it out. I wish I could see you. Okay. Good job. Now, verse 16 is going to give us the answer. And this is what Peter answered. You are the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. Jesus was very happy with Peter for telling the truth so boldly. He then blessed Peter in a very interesting way. He gave Peter a nickname. Now, I'm going to have you guess the nickname. So let's look at the next slide. This is our last slide. And was the nickname A, The Rock? B, the sparrow, C, the cobra, or D, the thunderbolt? Okay, rock, sparrow, cobra, or thunderbolt. Are you ready to act out the answer you chose? Ready, go. All right, well, let's find out what Jesus said to Peter, and this is verse 17 and 18. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. No mere human showed this to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. Here is what I tell you. You are Peter. On this rock I will build my church. All right, so if you guessed rock, you're correct. Jesus told Peter that he would be the rock, the strong foundation on which God would build his church. Well, that's our game, so thanks for playing. Pick that emoji. All right, guys, give yourselves a big hand. I wish I could have seen you acting out some of these answers. It would have been so much fun. Okay. You know, Peter had the courage to speak up about what he believed. He declared what's true about Jesus, that Jesus was the Son of God. And just like Jesus said, Peter went on to be an important leader of the church. He boldly told other people that Jesus is the Savior God had promised. There's a lot we can learn from this conversation that Jesus had with his disciples. We can talk about what we believe just like they did. In fact, this is an important part of our training plan. This part is Practice talking about God. 
We can talk with our friends and our family about what it means to follow God. We can ask questions when there are things that we don't understand. And as we do, we, we will get to know God better and better. And we'll grow stronger in our relationship with him. All right. Let's watch the so-and-so show. <laughs> I'll be back in a bit. Whoa, 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 Brandon. What, what? Take it easy there, man. What? The, you, you, you have to use those things properly. Do you know how many side effects there are to that? With this? What? Yeah. Like what? Well... They cause flexing, bruising, exhaustion, tiredness, nausea, headaches, body aches, heart aches, fake aches, energy loss, energy gain, thoughtful conversations, pointed observations, excited exclamations, neutral fingernails, you can't stop dribbling a basketball, flat feet, incredibly arched feet, scissor hands, makes you lose your keys. Water starts to taste like orange juice, which is really bad when brushing your teeth. Vitamin D deficiency, moist palms, all your electronics break, gawking onlookers, frenetic trembles, traumatic trembles, grammatic mumbles, tic tac tumbles, your eyes become toes, your mom forgets your birthday, you get too muscly and you can't wash your back in the shower, paper cuts, sc soft stool, so every time you try and sit down on a stool, it just collapses under you. You bump your head indoors when you walk through, tremendous lats, <sighs> and dry mouth. Whoa, that's impressive. Are there any uh, side effects to talking so fast? <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, hello everyone, my name's John And I'm Brandon And this is the So-and-So Show We've got a great show for you today John is getting the crowd psyched up and ready to watch. Yeah, today we've got uh, uh, Bible story time with Kellen. One. We'll have our question of the day. Two. And I think we've got a guest on the show. Three. That's right, folks. John just listed three things that are happening on the show today. He's three for three. Okay. You know what? Uh, um, what are you doing, John? Just insert your name. Uh-oh, looks like John's starting to lose focus. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out and what's going on. And he's lost it. Oh, can't keep it together. You hate to see that. Will you stop it? What? What? I'm just... I'm training to become a play-by-play -play announcer. A what? Well, you know, the person who says everything that's happening during sporting events, it's always been my dream to meticulously describe something that people are already seeing with their own eyes. Yeah, that does sound pretty exciting. I know. And here's an expert to give me some pointers. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Hey, hello. Come on in. Have a seat. Have a seat. So tell everybody out there who you are and what you know. My name is Doris Nolan, and I'm a sportscaster. I do a little bit of everything, but what I do most is play-by-play -play commentary. Hmm. Brandon is stepping up to the plate, looking to deliver the compliment that will put him into Doris Nolan's good graces, the wind-up, the pitch, and... Doris, so glad that you're here. I'm, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. I and it's that. a home run, everyone! He makes contact and sends it out of the park! Wow, it, it looks like you're looking to get into the world of play-by-play -play commentary yourself. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any advice? Uh, like anything, you've got to make a plan and see it through. I started reporting for high school games and worked my way up. It wasn't quick, but I was passionate about it, so I just kept going. And practice, 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 just like you're doing. Practice out loud what you want to say and how you'll say it. Is there any chance that you could give me a demonstration? Uh, sure. John, could you do me a favor and get me a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> Now, there are a lot of different ways to call a game. The way we're talking right now is one way. It's just a normal conversation. Like, you can tell John has done this before. He knew right where the coffee station was. There was no pause, no hesitation. Look at that confidence. Isn't that right, Brandon? Y yeah. Oh, no need to be nervous. We're just talking, right? Right. Sorry. Sorry. Confidence is key in this business. Understood. 
Another key is being aware of your surroundings. Like I might call a golf tournament a little different. Watch. John has selected the 16 ounce disposable insulated cup. It's a good choice for this moment. It will keep the coffee warm longer. Plus it's biodegradable. So it's good for the environment. Brandon. That's right, Doris. And he's crushed the cup. Was that too much? For golf, probably. (laughs) But hey, you messed up with confidence. You got to make mistakes, Brandon. That's how you learn. Let's try this time like we're calling a race. John's taking a pit stop to put a sleeve on the cup. No one wants a hot hand when you're trying to carry a cup of coffee. And the sleeve is on. It's time to pour. No time to waste. Regular or decaf? What's it going to be? Regular. That's the kind of fuel that'll push him past the competition. But will he use creamer? What do you think, Brandon? I don't know. No, no, don't feel bad. Look, you just said the three words that are the hardest for a sports commentator to say. I don't know. It's okay not to know everything. It's a lot better than pretending you know something you don't. <laughs> You're on the right track. Trust me. Really? Really. Now, give it another shot. We're calling soccer now. John's got control of the coffee, but he's still got a big decision to make. Cream or sugar? Cream or sugar? Cream or sugar? And he goes for the cream. A great call. He pours the cream in a smooth pour and an impressive showing. But he's not done there, Doris. John makes the bold choice to go for the cream and the sugar. But it will it but will it be too sweet to drink? He stirs, he sips, and it's good! It's good! Goal! That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you for your help. <laughs> and thanks for the coffee, John. Oh, you're welcome. It's Bible story time with Kelly! What's up, fellas? Oh, hey, Kellen. What are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about a time Jesus asked his disciples this question. Who do you say I am? And we'll find out what they said today on... Out loud. Here's how this game works. I will ask our contestants questions. They will be given a moment to think before they answer. And then they will answer the question out loud. Let's meet our contestants. My name is Erica, and I'm a real estate agent in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm Louise, and I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friends back home in Linwood, California. Go Falcons! Woo! And I'm one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. Hi, I'm Peter. I don't think I have to tell you this, but just in case, the real Peter never appeared on a game show. Let's play Thinking Out Loud. First question is for Erica. Can God, the creator of the universe and everything in it, create something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Erica, start thinking. Wow, okay, that's a hard one. Now, I know that God can do anything, right? So he can create anything. But then, God is also really strong. So there's nothing he can lift. But wait, can it be both things at once? I don't know. Am I going to sound dumb if I say I don't know? That's not an answer. I feel like I have to have an answer. But what if I... Time's up, Erica. Can God create something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Uh, um, well, here's, here's the thing. There are a lot of variables to consider. And what I am trying to say is I don't know the answer. Very good, Erica. You thought out loud. Sometimes questions don't have a clear-cut answer. And saying I don't know is perfectly fine. 10 points. I wonder what the points are for. Absolutely nothing. Up next, Louise, your question. You're in school and a friend wants to copy your test. What do you say? Start thinking. Oh, man. 
Why can't I have gotten the last one? This one is so hard. I know it's wrong to let someone cheat. Of course it is, but can I really say that here? I mean, what if my friends are watching? I don't want them to think I'm a loser or whatever. No, wait. I know just what to say. So, Louise, you're in school, and a friend asked to copy off your test. What do you say? I don't know, Kellen. Ooh. So sorry, Louise. You didn't think out loud. You did know the answer, but you kept it to yourself because you were afraid of what people might think. When you know what's right, you should let it out. So that brings us to our story. Jesus came up to Peter and his other disciples and asked, Who do people say I am? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And then Jesus said to them, But what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter, when Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? Who do I say Jesus is? Well, he's, he's a teacher. He's taught me so much. But he's more than that. He's, he's a miracle worker. I've seen him walk on water. I've, I've seen him feed thousands of people with a few loaves of bread and fish. He's, he's healed people who are sick and given sight to the blind. He's... He's the one the prophet spoke about hundreds of years ago. The savior that God promised. He's the Messiah. But do I have the courage to actually say that out loud? Peter, when Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? I said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Yes, that's what Peter said when Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? He said what was on his heart. He talked about what he believed with other people. Thank you, Peter, for thinking, thinking out loud. <laughs> it's good to talk about what we believe. The more we practice talking about God, the more comfortable we are. You can talk about God with people who believe the same as you or people who believe differently than you. If you have questions, ask. And if you don't know an answer, that's okay too. Just keep talking. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks, Kellen. Kellen, once again, showing everyone how it's done. <sighs> We're still doing this? Doris told me to keep practicing if I want to be good, so... Okay, okay. Reveal the question! Ah, who can you talk to about God? Maybe you can talk to your parents. Uh, or your friends. Or a teacher or a small group leader. Or you can talk to us. Go, go ahead. Yeah, we can't hear you. Still good practice yeah. just talking. <laughs> After an intense episode of The So-and-So Show, we're ready to sign off here. So until next time, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. And we'll see you. Let me do it. We'll see you next time. And Brandon has approached the coffee table. He's going for the regular caffeine, which is a risk for somebody who doesn't drink coffee. He's smelling it. It does not smell enticing at all. He's questioning why he's doing this. Looks like he's smelling. He's tested the public cream cup. Oh, he's putting the sugar straight into his mouth. That's great. It'll help the coffee go down sweeter. That's And he takes a big gaping sip. Oh, he spilled. Oh, he does not enjoy it. Wow, I've never seen anybody gargle with hot coffee. Kids, do not do that at home. Oh, he doesn't have his wallet. He does not have his wallet. Is he going to make a run for it, or is he going to be an upstanding citizen like a host of so-and-so show should be? Nope, he's running. <laughs> Hi. <clears throat> you know what I think one of the greatest gifts God has ever given us? I'm going to give you a hint. Missing this is one of the reasons COVID was so difficult. You think you know the answer? One of the greatest gifts that God has given us is the gift of other people. Other people people who love him, and people who want to talk about him. And there are also people in our lives who do not yet know 
how much God loves them. And God has given us the chance to talk about what we believe so that we can encourage each other and help each other grow closer to God every day. Jesus asked questions of his friends to understand who he really is. And Peter had the courage to share what he really believed, and that is that Jesus is the Son of God. Whether we're at church or at home or with our friends, we can do this. Practice talking about God. We can talk with each other about God and about all the things that he's doing in our lives. And when we decide to talk and ask questions about God, we can learn more and more about him together. We can talk about what it means to live his way. And we can help each other make the right choices in the situations that come up in our lives. So far, for our training plan to grow stronger in our relationship with God, we've talked about three of the important elements. And the first one was hearing from God. Last week, we learned about praying to God. Today, talking about God. And next week, Mrs. Forky is going to be with you to talk to us about the last element, and that is to live for God. All right, fold your hands. Let's pray. Oh, God, it's such a cool thing to hear about the conversation Jesus and his friends had that day. We know that when we talk about you, it can help us grow stronger in our relationship with you. Help us be brave like Peter. Please give us the courage to talk about you and ask questions about you so we can know you better. Help us talk about you with other people so they can know how much you love them too. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, I have one announcement, and that is Bible school. We are doing in-person Bible school in June. We're doing it two separate weeks so that we can have more kids come. So preschoolers, which means you were three before January, and you've completed 4K, okay? Those children come the week of June 21st, to the 25th from 9 to 11.30. And the elementary children, kindergarten through fifth grade completed, they will be coming June 28th through July 2nd from 9 to noon. So kids, we're so excited to be back in person for Bible school this year. So please go to the website and get signed up for Bible school, okay? You guys have a great week. Take care. God bless you. Bye.